So we created a first order network model to model smartphone app usage. So we go to the next slide. So the average user has downloaded about 40 apps on their phone. And for 89% of the time that users use their smartphone, they only use 18 of those apps. Clearly, there's a discrepancy here. And when we have 9 million apps worldwide, there has to be some factor driving this reason for this lack of smartphone app usage. So one common uh, discussion in today's uh, society is that we are constantly overloaded with information, which has its effect on how we use the technologies. So when we talk about information overload, we're talking about the state of being overwhelmed by information, uh, where the demands exceed the processing capacity of the individual, which causes stress, fatigue, uh, and poor performance in several different tasks. There are some like existing computational models of information overload, but usually those consider only the attention limitation, which is the cognitive side of information processing. However, most uh, attempts to qualitatively theorize or model information overload usually consider uh, cognitive, which is like the attention or working memory, processes, as well as the emotional aspects of information overload. For example, one sort of this sort of type of uh, qualitative model, which is this emotional cognitive overload model, uh, also discusses the information processing and the emotional effects of information overload, which was the starting point for our modeling process. So when we designed our model, first of all, we decided to use the model that we're giving in class because it's an amazing model. But we have a few specific things that we do to make sure this is a first order model, which accurately reflects smartphone app usage. We have multiple nodes, adaptive weights, and an adaptive threshold. And it accounts for the user cognition. Some of the most important nodes within this network is the emotion node, the context node, and the attention node. So this is a this is a pretty big uh, diagram, but these nodes represent the app and it represents the usage of the app. This is your attention node and it represents how much attention you have to spare for using and being emotionally invested in your app. This is the context. When we're using our phones, the context of how we're using it, like if we're on a bus, is different than if we're at a party. And so that context helps keep your attention up because there's an impetus for you to use your phone. But furthermore, each app elicits a smart app, elicits an emotional connection. Instagram elicits a different a different emotion than Google Maps. And we value emotion based on balance. So one means you really like the app, and a zero means you really don't like the app. And use. Um, use basically means it's your decision to use the app. How much you like the app fuels how much you want to like use the app. And finally, there's influence. Influence is basically what is influencing you to use the app. While Google Maps doesn't really elicit a strong emotional response, it does help you get around the city. So that's that influence node, which really fuels the use of an app. Finally, the coolest part of the model is our weights and our threshold. So the threshold for attention raises the attention's ability to have more impact and activation because attention is drained a lot in our model when you're using the app. And so the higher the threshold, the more attention you can spare to use the apps. Furthermore, our weights basically is based upon the idea that the more you use an app, the stronger an emotional response there is. And the weights um, should be acting on the emotion nodes um, because this it should be on the emotion nodes to figure, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, so, like, so there is a little bit of there. Uh, we've been training a lot of that. Well, we've been training around a lot of that here, but it should be on the emotion because the more you use it, the easier it is for you to raise your emotion using it because you really enjoy it. So we can go to the next one. Finally, we use four equations. We use a logistic, 
PBM for the first order um, weights, ID for passing along values, um, and then we use a random step on for the influence because it's not like a constant influence, influence varies. And so we want the influence from the influence vector like that. So, okay, so we run two, di two different types of scenario simulations. And in this first one, uh, we only activated one of the apps. So if we go through what this simulation tells us about this model, first we see that there's outside influence uh, for the user to use the app, which results in user using the app. This is followed by the emotional response. So in our model, we initially start from neutral point uh, five position and then the emotional balance rises. So meaning that the user is liking the app, but at the same time, the usage of the app also taxes some of the attentional resources of the user. Then when we follow uh, what happens, uh, the one app here, we can see that it consumes some of the attentional resources, which in turn uh, downgrades the emotion in the long run. If we look at the same simulation with a bit longer time frame, we can see, see that there's, first of all, there's the influence from the outside, which are these like random looking things which makes the user engage with the app more. And once those uh, influences drop, the like user disk engages with the app. And the pattern here is that throughout uh, the usage, whenever the user engages with the app, the attention is taxed, which in turn lowers the emotion while using the app because the user likes it, raises the emotion. So with one app case, we see that the emotion is uh, converging towards the neutral state in the long run. In scenario two, we activated three apps to see how having multiple apps would affect the model. So again, here, actually, let's not go there. So we have the same sort of pattern. So there's outside influence, then the user engages with the app, then the emotional balance is raised and the engagement with the app is followed by the attentional taxation. But what we see in this third three app case is that the attentional demand is much higher, which leads to lowering of the emotion below the neutral. And we can see that the trend here is that the uh, emotion turns to negative because of the overloading of the attentional resources. Also, we can see that compared to the one app case, uh, the user uses the apps less. This, we can also see like the same simulation in a longer time frame. We can see that the emotion go uh, significantly lower uh, one when the user is using all the three apps repeatedly together. And also we can see that like the emotion, like trend of what the using of the app has on emotion is like growing. Mm -hmm. Then like about the excitability factor of the model, which was the T factor, we can here see that if we run, like this is the second scenario, we run it for 10,000 steps. So in the beginning, we see that the threshold is very low and the attentional uh, variance is very high. This is the purple line and the emotions keep on being below the neutral, which means that they are negatively balanced. But after around 1,000 steps, uh, the adaptation of the excitability factor leads to a higher threshold, which means that using the app 
does not take that much of the attention of the user, which is uh, psychologically uh, intuitive since like when we learn to deal with our environment better, we use our resources more strategically and effectively. So this is what happens here. And once like the attentional resources are not taxed that much, like the using of the app, which the user originally likes, is creating more positive emotions. So some points of discussion. Yeah, basically information overload refers to the cognitive limitations of the human mind, the emotional response to the over taxation of cognitive resources. And essentially we've developed a model which captures this dynamic between the outside influence to use the apps and our own, our own limited resources and our emotional response to the app. And we're, gonna, we're able to simulate different situations. Uh, stronger weights from apps to emotions is equal to more addictive apps. Stronger connection weights from apps to attention, we're stronger from skills and we have, we have less uh, experience. And there's very influences on the outside world. So it's a very dynamic model. And there is this first sort of reputation level which allows for model learning and individual differences. And it could be improved um, with inhibitory connections to connections between the engagement and the emotions and more innate emotion mode, which could improve the overall model. But ultimately there's a really great, a really strong uh, base for this model. And 